So let's just talk about the, 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 the basics, the bare bones, okay? I feel like I haven't done a good enough job covering, like, the nerdy side of the Constitution and the, and the interpretations and the dissenting opinions and the concurring opinions that were thrown out there and the, and the minutia and how, you know, uh, John Roberts was, like, truly conflicted and wanted to maintain uh, Roe v. Wade, but actually was, like, fine with, uh, you know, limiting abortion or giving states the rights to limit abortion. So... You know, we, we got to do some of that because, after all, you need to be educated on everything, okay? Morning with the decision that sent shockwaves across America. The Supreme Court ending constitutional protection for abortions by overturning Roe versus Wade. In a landmark decision Friday, the court's five most conservative justices struck down the nearly 50-year-old ruling in a 1992 case that reaffirmed the right to an abortion. The decision in this new case, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, sends the issue of abortion rights back to the states, and it's likely to result in abortion bans in about half. While the Supreme Court's decision is a victory long sought by abortion opponents, the ruling was met with outrage by abortion rights advocates. By the way, like, it was met with outrage not just by abortion rights advocates, just, like, by most of the country. Like, can we just, can we just point out that it was most of the country? I don't like that the framing is like, oh, a bunch of random edge cases. Like, you know what I mean? A bunch of random women who, like, live and die by, like, uh, the right to be able to have an abortion. Like, no, that's not the case, actually. I, 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 like, the other side is a bunch of fucking twisted little freaks, for sure. Like, they 100% have made it their lives mission, and they're psychotic. There were so many people who fucking traveled to D.C., of course, uh, you know, if you listen to the New York Times or if you fucking watch M listen to NPR, read any of these fucking articles, like, you will find these fucking twisted little freaks being mentioned as though they're, like, normal people when they're clearly not. It is no different than, like, uh, asking someone who is, like, clearly having a fucking mental breakdown what their perspective is on, on the Supreme Court. You know what I mean? You would never do that, usually, okay? But... I guess the internet has created the system, this process where like everyone's voice is just as important as one another's and we have, uh, and we've like robbed it of the context of who's saying what. So now we just like have this weird normalizing effect without like uh, placing any consideration on the mental well-being of the person who fucking traveled 2,000 miles to DC to be like, fuck yeah, women can't get fucking abortions anymore. Like that's an unwell person. That person probably should be institutionalized, okay, for a little bit. Just a little bit, just a baby bit. In a normal society, that's what would happen. But instead, in this society that we live in, the New York Times is like, let me put a microphone in your fucking face and ask you what your perspective is and then act like that's a normal thing. It's not a normal thing. I'm sick and tired of acting like it's a normal thing. You're a psycho. You're a crazy person. You are unwell. I don't want you fucking dictating policy. I'm a fucking ableist, dog, okay? I'm ableist as fuck, straight up. I don't want geriatric motherfuckers with no stake, no skin uh, in the game, with no stake on the fucking repercussions of their actions, making these kinds of decisions. Straight up. Straight the fuck up. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's, it's so ridiculous. And I think a lot of people are recognizing how ridiculous it is. Ultimately, until there's debate bros all over Twitter trying to own women for their own bodily autonomy. Bro, that's... I know. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. It is so frustrating. It's so fucking insane. If your immediate inclination in the aftermath of like literally tens of millions of women losing access to a medical coverage, like a normal medical procedure, okay? If your immediate inclination is to like try to fucking get your licks in in the marketplace of ideas, you need to get lobotomized. Like you need to be lobotomized, okay? Do not talk to these fucking freaks. They are not genuine. They're not genuine in their interest in learning. They just want to fucking have fun. They are far removed from the consequences of the actions of the Supreme Court. That's why they're having fun. You can have fun back by, like, looking at them, laughing at them, which we will do. That's why I do hogwatch. But, like, most of those people are fucking absolute zealots, okay? They're, like, religious... Uh, they're just god perverts, or they're debate perverts, even worse than a god pervert, right? And, and the only thing you should do in that situation is just, like, have fun. Have fun. Watch their fucking mania unfold. But don't ever take them seriously because they certainly aren't taking you seriously. Relax, man. If you want to be relaxed in this circumstance, you're just not paying attention to what the fuck's going on, honestly. I mean, <laughs> what do you mean, relax, man? Yeah, of course. A, a great example of a, of a person who's out there being like, relax, man. First of all, I am pretty calm. 
I think I'm pretty calm for given the the situation at hand, given my coverage over the situation that's going on. I'm I'm very calm in this circumstance, probably because I am a man and I am uh, a a man in California, relatively affluent, well off, have the capacity to be able to you know not be impacted by this personally. Okay, have my loved ones not be impacted by this personally. That doesn't stop me from caring and thinking about all those people who will though be impacted by this personally. Okay. Just uh, remember that there are people out there. You might not know them. You might not care about them, but ultimately they're real human beings who are suffering because of the consequences of these, these uh, lifeless husks that decided uh, to follow through on a fucking 40 year project. There are people in this community that will be affected. Of course, dude. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Has anyone suggested to women that they should relax it? Yeah, exactly. I think women should just relax. They should just calm down. You know, not a big deal. So even if you're a man in this situation, even if you're like kind of conservative and you don't fully understand it, maybe you've been like conditioned into thinking like this is like crazy. This is actually murder and should be stopped or whatever. Don't you think it's fucking hypocritical? Like doesn't the hypocrisy of it all piss you off at least? Like these are so, these are, these are incredibly powerful elites that just can rip fucking rights away at a moment's notice. You know what I mean? And like dramatically fuck millions of women. Like, just actually dramatically undermine their civil liberties, their autonomy. The state can just come in and be like, nope, we're not doing this anymore. Get fucked, bitch. And that's, like, the primary purpose of it, too. There is no, like, underlying motivating principle here that's rooted within, like, a moral perspective. No matter how much people try to make it so. No matter how much people try to say, like, oh, well, this is actually about avoiding murder. It's like, well, no, it's still bodily autonomy. All these fucking libertarians, all these conservatives are like constantly advocating to like murder homeless people or people that come into your home. But when something is like literally stuck to your body, okay, that you didn't want to have, you can easily take a pill. Oh shit. You can easily take a pill in the first trimester where 92% of abortions happen, okay, and, and deal with the problem. But they don't want that. They're like, nope, sorry. You know, it's violating, it's violating NAP, okay? Your non-aggression principles. It's violating, the, the fetus is violating your, your bodily autonomy, okay? It's just hypocritical, even from a libertarian perspective is what I'm saying, okay? Now, here's the thing. You might not want to fucking kill someone that comes into your house and breaks into your house, okay? That's up to you. But the state can't fucking stop you from, like, defending yourself, right? If you're an American citizen, the state can't stop you from defending yourself, I thought. It's wild that, like, you know, the only time you can actually fucking do an abortion is if you do it with a gun, I guess, because the gun has better fucking, the gun has better protections than, than women's bodies. Wild. Wild set of circumstances here that we are currently, uh, currently experiencing. Here, let's watch. Protests spread from the steps of the high court to cities across the country, and demonstrations are planned in more than 100 cities throughout the weekend. At a protest in Phoenix last night, police used tear gas to scatter demonstrators. Police say the protesters were banging on the windows of the state capitol while the Senate was in session there. There were no injuries or arrests. We have a team of correspondents covering the seismic decision. One of the most wild things about the, fo the footage that you just saw is the state using tear gas, which of course is, uh, I always fuck the way saying, I always fuck this word up, but an abortificent or whatever, however you fucking say it. Like they're literally, Felix pointed this out. Tear gas is an abortificent. I don't know how to fucking say that word. Tear gas is an abortificent. Uh, not that any of these fucking bowling balls with eyes give a shit. Just if there was any belief in an American pro-life position that wasn't about pure malice and domination. Abortifacient. Abortifacient. Abortifacient? Whatever. I'm in Ohio. My ex had to get an abortion when I was in college. If that had happened today, we'd be stuck with a baby we don't want, can't afford, and have no clue how to take care of. This affects all of us, and it makes me physically ill. What does that word mean? It's a, it's, it's something that can cause an abortion. It's a chemical that can cause an abortion. Okay. Is abortion legal in Turkey, Hassan? Yes, it is. I know Turkish people would say it's not, but it absolutely fucking is. Abortion is legal and also state sponsored. Yes. A tear gas can and will, depending on how much you consume, will cause an abortion. And is, is an abortion causing agent. Thank you on a counter that I and I assume everyone here believes but I'll hit you with the counter of the house argument just because you made because I don't know how to counter in every day if you don't want to have baby then don't have sex 
Why? Why is the state telling you not to have sex? Is the only reason to have sex to have babies? That's an insane proposition. That is like, that's a great argument, dude. That's actually a great argument. Whenever someone says that, it's like, why would I? Why would I stop that? Like, that is a psychotic position. And most people don't agree with that position. Just remember, a lot of people do not believe that position. That is a religious, zealot, psychopathic fucking position to have. Okay? Like, that's insane. What are we doing? Is this the 19 fucking 30s? Like, what, what do you mean? Oh, don't have sex if you don't want to have an abortion. Like, why, why not? Why is Betterman like in all of Rittenhouse Post? Who the fuck is Betterman? It is, but doctors don't do it and they try to make you change your mind. Just pure hypocrisy. Fuck these people in power. I mean, yeah, they, look at that. What do you say to someone that says that women should keep their legs closed? I mean, plenty of women do keep their fucking legs closed and then they get raped. You know what I mean? So that, it doesn't, that doesn't stop states from still saying like, no, you have to fucking carry this pregnancy to term. But once again, that's just pure victim blaming. Okay, keep their legs closed. Like that all are created equal, not born equal, created equal. But Speaker Nancy Pelosi questioned if the court's Trump appointed justices had misrepresented their. I mean, quite literally, unless you're a woman, because like if you have the capacity to give birth, then you're trapped. You're a fucking broodmare. You know what I mean? You're literally a baby incubator and nothing more. You can't just be like all are created equal while defending a new bill or like provisions that are coming down or were already in existence that that greatly fucking reduced the bodily autonomy that women have over their own fucking bodies. Like, it, 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 no, very clearly it's not. We, we don't have we don't have equality. Like, that's a, a wild take. Except immigrants, except poor children, except women. Yeah, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Christian, were states always allowed to make abortion illegal not e uh, even before this? Yes. What? That was the entire principle of Roe v. Wade. That's why they all are. That's why they just mentioned trigger laws, which mean like laws either that were in the books before Roe v. Wade that rendered them uh, incapable of, of that, that made it unconstitutional to, to have said, said laws or uh Laws hoping that like this decision would be overturned, would be struck down at some point, so they would automatically kick in. Now, even when, just make no mistake here, okay? Because I talked about this so much for many, many years. Like even before this uh, abortion was like criminalized, right? And there's many different ways of like attacking and making it as hard as possible for women to be able to get an abortion, even before abortion was like uh, uh, criminalized with this recent Roe v. Wade decision. How? Well, by trap laws, by instituting like red tape, by stopping, uh, you know, the building of abortion, uh, like places where you can offer abortion, severely limiting who can actually offer an abortion. And even what Texas was doing, which is like a bounty system that they implemented to try to uh, subvert the criminal uh, uh, system, like, and, and do it by, by uh, funding individuals uh, who will, will snitch and and put like uh put people that are offering abortion as a service to um offering abortion as a service to under like a fuckload of legal scrutiny that is state funded by the way so that was just like one of the many different ways that they are one of the many different ways that people have always limited abortions that's why like states like mississippi had like one fucking clinic to begin with you know what i mean position on row to congress were they not telling the truth then republican susan collins who voted for Damn, Nancy, you fucking bouldered them. You, you blistered them. Do you think more states will make abortion illegal now? Not CIB. Look at the video. They just showed you the exact number of states that uh, already have. These are the states where abortion has already made, been made basically illegal, okay? These are the states that ban abortion almost immediately, and then these are the states that will follow through and will uh, will most likely greatly restrict abortion or ban it outright. Coming to you to learn, Daddy. I know, but we already covered it. You know what I mean? Pay attention to the fucking video. <laughs> anyway. Had misrepresented their position on Roe to Congress. Were they not telling the truth then? Republican Susan Collins. Oh, were they not telling the truth then? I don't know, Nancy. How many times do you have to be a fucking dumbass, dude? Of course they weren't telling the truth we need a strong republican party hey remember when nancy was saying we need a strong republican party we need a strong republican party we need a strong republican party hey nancy let me ask you something all those fucking strong republicans they're they're doing touchdown dances right now they're doing end zone celebrations currently because like millions of women will no longer be able to get this uh you know medical procedure 
right? So what's up with the strong Republican Party then? Huh? Like, just because they're not Donald Trump or, uh, you know, overtly Trump supporters, even though most of them are anyway, where, where is the strong Republican Party that you were mentioning? Because it seems like this was a very long, 40-year-long project for them, and they very successfully achieved those goals and also dramatically undermined uh, Congress's ability to legislate while simultaneously packing the courts. And that was the strong Republican Party you were, you know, that you were looking for. And that strong Republican Party is is not just Trump. It was like way before Trump. Trump was a fucking Democrat when that strong Republican Party that you're like, uh, you know, simping for was around and doing this shit. You know, building the fucking foundations. Ectopic pregnancy between the ages of 26 to 30 is 51%. That diagnosis is death unless abortion occurs. What are we to do? Die? Yes. Let God sort it out is kind of unironically the fucking take for all of these states that make no exceptions. There are states currently that make no fucking exceptions. And the most disgusting fucked up part about this is that you ask the state legislators like, well, what about ectopic pregnancies? They say God, God will sort it out. If there was a fucking God, he would have sorted you out, you fucking scumbag. What do you mean, let God sort it out? You literally would not exist on this planet if there was a God out there and there was like karmic justice at the very least. You know what I mean? You would not. You would have been sorted out. Ridiculous. ...who voted for Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh released a statement saying that both nominees were insistent on the importance of supporting... Okay, is Susan Collins going to fucking push for a bill? Is Susan Collins going to fucking... Uh, whip the Republican Party? Is Susan Collins going to actually try to fucking garner support for codifying Roe v. Wade? Because if that's not the case, I don't want to hear from you, okay? I don't care. If Joe Manchin comes out and says, wow, I've been fucking duped by the Republicans that actually said that they would not do this, it's like, all right, motherfucker, abolish the filibuster then. Make, take action right now. These are things that we could do. These are, and the reason why I'm mentioning this, by the way, is specifically because <clears throat> when you go out there and you protest, it's easy to just be angry and be like, oh, you know, hands off my body, hands off my body, hands off my fucking body, you know, whatever. And that's understandable to feel angry and that's understandable to not really know, but direct your anger in the appropriate places, okay? What we need to do is actually channel that anger into productive rage, which is what the Republicans do all the time. They will take like fucking festering anxieties and anger and then direct it at like insane proposals like the school vouchers program or some shit you know what i mean they will literally take like QAnon schizos and turn them into fucking warriors for uh for for abolishing public education and that's crazy and the democrats don't do that they don't do that at all there's like very legitimate anger out there festering very legitimate anger and and justified rage out there and we have no way to fucking channel that we have no way to direct it into the appropriate avenues which is why i'm always telling you like there are things that we can do and when you're out there in a fucking protest if you're one of these organizers and you're in here and there's plenty of you in here right now if you're at the dsa if you're at your local dsa and you're about to you know set up a protest for abortion make sure that make sure that your anger is directed in the right places okay and yes it's not just the Republicans, but Democrats are also a legitimate place to fucking direct your anger at as well. Anyone that stands in opposition to abolishing the filibuster in this very moment is a fucking piece of shit. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter, okay? I don't give a fuck that Biden came out and the first thing he said is don't be mean, don't be violent, okay? Direct your anger in the appropriate avenues. Supporting long-standing precedents like Roe. America. Examples of right places, uh, court packing, trying to fucking change the, the dynamic of the Supreme Court, add fucking additional, add additional Supreme Court justices to the court, uh, push for Biden to put forward a bill where like there will be federal land utilized for abortion clinics on federal land that's like protected by the federal government, uh, push for the uh, uh, abolition of the filibuster and, uh, and, and codifying Roe v. Wade, turning it into law. These are things that you could fucking advocate for, okay? And you should advocate for, but the Democrats don't want to do any of that stuff. Libs get so pissed at me for telling them the Republican Party is a hundred times more productive. What's the point of voting for a party that avoids anything to do hell? Yeah, I know. I don't know why like liberals don't demand more from their own uh, politicians. You know how you get mad at me? Like you, you probably you're like, oh man, my life fucking sucks. Look at this guy. All he does is sit on his ass and like watch YouTube videos and make a fuckload of money, right? You know how you get mad at me and like you think you're doing good action? Channel that frustration into something more productive, I promise. There will be plenty of time where you can shit on me. Do you understand? Plenty of fucking time, you little babies. I'm here all day, every day. 
okay? Come back to me when uh, we've actually gotten some solutions in the Democratic Party rather than uh, rather than just fucking constantly, uh, the Democratic Party like legitimately just complaining and doing nothing. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had a good thread on this. Here's how the Dems can plus must do more than wait for an election, okay? I'm a Twitch streamer, okay? I'm a Twitch streamer. I have no power. I am completely fucking powerless. I'm completely powerless. I can't fundamentally change your lives. I have no control over your lives whatsoever. You could just very easily turn out, turn off this fucking stream and go about your day-to-day and I will never, I will never be able to change your life. The only way I can actually change your mind is if you watch me, okay? And if it's making you angry and making you angry and you want to direct that anger towards me, then I don't know what to tell you. You understand? I hope that I can change your mind into becoming an organizer. I hope that I can change your mind into organizing your workplace. I hope that I can change your mind into taking political action and and not just uh, immediately think that like the only thing to do in this situation is to just fucking shit on me, all right? Everyone that hates you without knowing you, especially, that's insane. Yeah, I know. There's so much. Stop talking about yourself at this point. Yeah, I mean, every now and then I have to fucking uh, make people like you good look up, who 100% is one of the people I'm talking about, uh, know that, like, I just don't have anything. I have no power. I'm powerless. Whew. Okay, so here's what AOC is talking about. Seven of the nine justices were appointed by a party that hasn't won a popular vote more than once in the last 30 years. One of those seats was stolen. Several lied to Congress to secure an appointment. One justice's family, Thomas, was paid by right-wing groups for years, and he never disclosed it, disclosed it, violating federal law. Same justice's spouse participated in January 6th, and he used his SCOTUS seat to vote to keep potential info related to his wife from investigators in Congress, which was a clear, clear, clear fucking violation of ethics rules, okay? In every other court in the American uh, court system, that is a violation that would mean that you would no longer be a judge, okay? You do that shit, you're no longer a judge. I disagree with you a ton and often, but this is the stuff I come and watch you for. You actually try and encourage proper ways to use our power? Yes. Two, justices stand very credibly accused of sexual assault, and that's the tip of the iceberg. Election or not, uh, the Supreme Court is a legitimacy crisis, and the public reaffirms it. 75% of the U.S. public reports lacking confidence in SCOTUS, and those numbers were the pre-row ruling. In a legitimacy crisis, the solution for Biden plus Dem leaders must offer can't just be one of voting, but of statute and authority compared to the executive and legislative branch. Checks on the court overreach and misconduct are little to none. Leaders must share their plans for a row and a rogue court. I agree with that. Past presidents from Lincoln to FDR understood the dangerous stakes of allowing an unchecked court overreach as authority and threaten our democracy. Lincoln ignored the court to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. FDR, in the plunge of the Great Depression, also sought to confront the court structure and core gerontocracy problem of lifetime appointments via public appeal. While he did not succeed, that check came from the people and Congress and not from fucking SCOTUS. The ruling is Roe, but the crisis is democracy. Leaders must share specific plans for both. The president and Dem Democratic leaders can no longer get away with familiar tactics to committees and studies to avoid tackling our crises head on anymore. Restrain judicial review. Oh, God, she is spitting, dude. Absolutely fucking spitting daggers, okay? Restrain judicial review. Absolutely. Open clinics on federal lands. Absolutely. Expand the court. Absolutely. Expand federal access and awareness of pill abortions, etc. Use the fucking VA. Use the VA. There's a VA everywhere in every goddamn state. Now, they're underfunded regardless, but pump some more fucking funds. You already have a shitload of money going in the military. Utilize that, dude. Fund the VA, okay, which I'm in favor of regardless. Instead of fucking funding new uh, Javelin missiles to, to go to whoever the fuck, okay, maybe we should uh, use some of the fucking additional $800 billion in discretionary spending towards funding the VA, you know? Veterans are out here fucked up. Twenty-two Every 22 minutes, another veteran is killing themselves in this fucking country. And we're out here acting like that's not a major problem. We're out here acting like that entire pool of people that are eligible for care from the Veterans Affairs Office, from those VA hospitals, are not deeply fucked up and cannot be compared to the actual pool of people who uh, buy into insurance across the board. That is an entire group of people that are fucked up, that deserve health care, okay? Just like every other American. Every other American deserves health care, obviously. But we already have we already have a plan set in place for these people, and we're still not offering them fucking uh, uh, the healthcare that we promised we'd give them. Use the VA, and then allow the VA to offer abortions to every fucking civilian. That's another way that you can do this. Okay, for the moments when the DO insists on election, 
For the moments when we do insist on elections, Dio, we must be precise with what we need and how what we will do with that power. How many seats does the party need to codify Roe? Dude, I love this. This is the exact conversation that me and Jamel Bowie had yesterday. She's so good. I mean, AOC is very good. She did. She does fucking keep her, uh, you know, she does keep her ear to the ground. She does keep her finger on the pulse. When it comes to moments like this, she does spit. This is the bare minimum a politician should do. But goddamn, dude, it is literally like, it's it's what we got. Okay. I mean, these are the same things I talk about every day. Every single thing that she has mentioned, I have covered yesterday before she even blasted this off. And I, I love her for it. Okay. This is good. This is great. Are you doing fundraising with AOC? Maybe. How many seats does a party need to codify road? Dems must say that. Not just go vote or give us $6 to win. That is demoralizing, losing, unfocused nonsense. Exactly. Dem leaders must tell voters the plan. What is the actual need? Which specific seats are we focused on? What votes do we need to do and where? What states and races? And what's the return? What is Biden and Congress actually willing and able to do at 52 to 60 seats? Be honest. Details motivate. But let's wake up everybody. What's good? Um, what's good, Democrats? If you don't like what I've laid out here, then please represent your plan instead of little why we can't list. Let's cut the hang ringing and get moving. Chop, chop. No more show tunes till November unless it's get out, unless forget out the vote. I'm not going to like that one. There's some still there's still some like, you know, cringe uh, liberal uh, stuff baked in there. Shut down Amazon at last night's March for abortion rights in Manhattan. Fuck yeah. AOC stole your shit. Flow for flow, bar for bar. What are you guys talking about, man? Okay, what, what are you guys talking about? This is like, this is all of us. These are our bars, okay? It belongs to all of us. There is no fucking intellectual property on, on emancipation, you know? I know you're joking, but still, don't even, that, that's not a thing. That is such a hyper-capitalist perspective to even joke about. That people would fucking personally think that there is like uh, some kind of gatekeeping or intellectual property on on like, you know, advocacy for emancipation. That's so funny. <laughs> I know it's a joke. I know. But like other people have, have said this about other people, too. I know. I know. I know. I know. You want to have fun. Sorry. Uh, I got real leftist there for a second. OK. <sighs> OK. Gatekeeping memes. Seize the bars of emancipation, comrade. Yeah. Register to vote. 42 states lets you to register to vote online. Dude, it's not just voting. It's not. We got to talk about, like, we have to talk about currently what we have to talk about. By the way, yeah, she was about to spit, dude. Let's see what she's going to say. But what we have to talk about in this circumstance is not to just say just vote. I'm going to be honest with you. If you say just vote in this moment, that is so incredibly fucking demoralizing, dude. Why? We already did the voting, dog. And the people that we voted for are not doing anything. They're, they're, they act like they're completely fucking handicapped by, by the Republican Party and, and procedural hurdles. If you say that to a normal person, and it's very hard. You're in here already, okay? You're in here every day. You're in here even when, like, shit's popping off, right? And if you're in here every day or when shit's popping off, you already have this perspective. You already have this attitude. Your brain is already wired in a certain way where like you kind of understand this stuff and how important politics is and how important political mobilizing is. You know what I mean? So you can't comprehend what the fucking normal person has. Like the, you can't comprehend the approach of a normal person. You can't understand it. A normal person sees this and goes, well, I fucking voted already. It's also incredibly demoralizing to cast doubt on voting as much as this community is doing with your lead. It has to be don't just vote, not why bother, why bother voting. We've heard some amount of the latter. My friend, you have to understand that there, that attitude is not something I can change. Okay, I can try as hard as I want to, but ultimately there are millions of people who refuse to vote. And there are millions more that have actually voted that are now thinking, well, what the fuck's going on? That's a very real feeling that they have. And of course I'm going to fucking say that that is an understandable feeling to have. Right now, it's not about voting, okay? Right now, it's about action. We, you're talking about this as though, like, the Democrats don't control Congress, as though the Democrats don't control the fucking White House, okay? I've had so many Republicans tell me that when it comes to such a controversial topic, it has to be left up to the people to vote state by state, which I think is just sad. The states that are or become no-choice state, there will be lives that are physically affected, while the people who are pro-life aren't affected in comparable way thoughts. First of all, those Republicans are just repeating talking points, not CIB. 
Those Republicans are simply repeating talking points that they've heard from other Republican commentators. Because the reality is that the overwhelming majority of Americans have historically been in support of protecting abortion, a woman's right to fucking choose. It doesn't matter if they're personally not interested in having an abortion if push came to shove, but they still don't think the state should interfere with that. Okay? That's part of the reason why the Supreme Court lied. The three appointments, the three recent Donald Trump picks, straight up lied and said, no, it's a super president, we're not going to change it. When Republicans say, oh, it's just, it should be left up to the states, they're actually lying. And here's why. State legislatures are dramatically undemocratic. Wisconsin is a great example of this that I use all the fucking time. In the state of Wisconsin, even though Democrats win by six points to 10 points, the Wisconsin state legislature is still a Republican supermajority as a con consequence of redistricting. The process in which, like, you redefine which districts have, uh, you know, which districts have what kind of fucking uh, elected representatives, okay? That, in and of itself, is undemocratic, and Republicans know that, and that's why they say, oh, well, leave it up to the states. So even if a state has, like, majority Democrats, even if a state has Republicans and a majority of Democrats actually say, we don't want fucking uh, abortion to be restricted in this state, the state legislature can, and often does, still push for laws that completely undermine the democratic process that completely undermined the democratic wishes of the majority of the people in said state. And Republicans, the, the Republican talking heads, as a matter of fact, know that reality. And that's why they, in, in a very cruel way, mislead their followers into thinking, oh, well, there's a democratic process there. None of these states have fucking ballot measures. It's not like these states have actual ballot measures because they know if they put a fucking ballot measure to publicly protect abortion that ballot measure would be so overwhelmingly fucking positive it would actually drive people out to go out and vote that's why they don't do that that's why they do it through the state legislatures which is dramatically undemocratic i have a blue senator a blue congressperson a blue governor and a blue president i couldn't vote harder if i tried what else do they want from me yeah do you think that the Dems see this as a kind of a W now? They get to run on social policy, culture war stuff, instead of being pestered with economic policy questions every election cycle? Now Dems get to run on bringing back Roe instead of whatever the, whether or not they will forgive student debt? I think what the Democrats don't understand, and this is really, really uh, scary, I think. I think what Democrats don't personally understand something, the American people see them in power right now. You're in power. So if you're powerless while you're in power... And you keep saying, well, you just got to vote harder. You got to vote harder. You have to remember, like, you're basically telling this group of people that, like, their vote didn't actually fucking matter. You know, because you're not pushing. You're not pushing people. Uh, you're, not, you're not redirecting people's anger in the way that, like, Republicans do. You know what I mean? Why the fuck would people want to vote for them if they're in power right now and they're still getting their shit pushed in? Anyway. Uh, weird, read the whole message. Weird how it said it needs to be not just voting when the message is it had us to be not just voting. The rule of the Democratic Party seems to be no matter how many votes they get, there will always be a Joe Manchin. Yeah, it's not just Joe Manchin, though. It's called the rotating villain. And we need to stop that. How do you stop that? You stop that by bullying Democratic representatives. Bully your Democratic representatives into doing the right thing. Redirect your anger towards them in the same way that these, like, evangelical freaks do, Okay. You need to bully him. You need to bully not just fucking Kirsten Cinema, not just Joe Manchin. You need to bully motherfuckers like Nancy Pelosi. You need to bully motherfuckers that you think are on your side, okay? Because none of them are, ultimately. How come they bully AOC but not Manchin? Because they're fucking stupid. How come people come in here and yell at me, a fucking Twitch streamer, instead of like people that are dramatically reducing their rights? Because we're powerless. Because we have lost all hope. That's what powerless people do. Powerless people who are understandably hurt and justifiably angry by structural oppression go and attack whatever they can. They can't, they can't attack a fucking congressperson. They can't criticize a congressperson. They can't get a congressperson to do whatever the fuck they want to do, even if the congressperson literally ran on actually fucking those ideas. They can't bully the congresspersons that are not accessible, so they come in here and they yell at me, right? And that's really fucking stupid. You can do that all you want. You can do that every day, okay? But just, first of all, use that anger towards fucking people in positions of power. I understand why you're mad. I understand why you're mad. Even when it comes to, like, dumb shit, like fucking Hassan bought a house, whatever. Remember, every time I've talked about this issue, I've always said, this is 
justifiable anger that people feel is just misdirected at the wrong person. Rationalizing the irrational is too charitable. They might be irrational in misdirected anger, but their anger is still rational. Of course you're going to be angry in the system, man. This, this shit sucks. It sucks. It completely fucking sucks. The reason why liberals are redirecting their anger at fucking Susan Sarandon is kind of similar to the way that, like, anarchists and, like, leftists, like, MLs on fucking Twitter yell at me, okay? They just, like, they're, they're looking for a good villain to fucking yell at because they know the appropriate uh, people that they suppo are supposed to yell at are their fucking allies, okay? People that they've already highlighted. That's why. They can't fucking say Hillary Clinton was, was sucking dog shit, okay? They can't say that because Hillary Clinton is, is a hero, right? So it has to be someone else. It has to be, uh, I don't know, like a fucking random person like Susan Sarandon. It has to be anyone else. It cannot be Hillary Clinton. It cannot be people who think like me, okay? I cannot admit that people who think like me left this mess for us. It can't be Barack Obama. It can't be the many times that fucking Democrats have held a majority where they could have done something to codify Roe and refuse to do so. It can't be Barack Obama who campaigned on codifying Roe v. Wade and didn't do it immediately after he was in, in power when he had a filibuster-proof majority, a supermajority in fucking Senate. It can't be the the uh, the Democratic Party thinking that like Hillary is definitely a shoe in for a, a dub there, an electoral dub. So uh, you know we shouldn't we shouldn't push that hard to fucking try to undermine and like I don't know um, use the nuclear option to fucking uh, get a Supreme Court justice in. This is a huge historic moment for America. As they These are people that are celebrating. Guys, those people that they're showing are people who are celebrating the end of Roe v. Wade. Hear the news from the court? There's jubilation from anti-abortionists. Life won today! Life won today! Life won Life won today? Listen, let me tell you something, okay? You didn't win shit. Straight up. You literally didn't win anything, lady, okay? Not going to say anything else. Just going to say, hey, don't worry. One way or the other, this was not impacting you, okay? Maybe your daughter, if you have one. I don't know. Probably not. Ultimately, not impacting you, okay? It's always, it's always like that. The motherfuckers that are out there, the loudest, are people who are just so incredibly sexless, dude. Straight up. Straight up, the, the least sex-having motherfuckers are out there like, Oh, yeah, we won! Yeah, it's like, well, you know, nah, now nah, you didn't actually chant celebrating a victory after almost 50 years. Oh, I've seen the death Literally all the fucking fem cells, dude. Oh, my Lord. Uh, the, I mean, some fem cells are, are obviously there's a fem cells are really interesting. Rad fems will either be like anti-abortion uh, and, you know, anti-sex work, all that, or they will be pro-abortion. But like they still fucking hate uh, men across the board, including all the dumb psychos who were like, uh, remember what you said about Amber Heard? How about you sit this one out? Yeah, okay, I'll sit this one out. How about how about you stop fucking posting about Amber Heard, dumbass? Your fucking rights are being removed, you dumb idiot. I I love that. I love looking at profiles like that that are like still tweeting about like Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and shit. Meanwhile, like your constitutional right is just removed, you fucking idiot. You dumb moron. Have fun. Good. Okay, yeah, I'll sit this one out, idiot. No, I, I'm not going to sit this one out. I'm going to raise fucking funds. I'm going to try to do my goddamn best while you fucking sit there in your little circle, festering, angry. This has some real right-wingers dunking on women's marchers. Yeah, these women are out of their mind, but there's plenty to dunk on rather their looks and shit. I mean, yeah, but sometimes it's good to just have a little fun, okay? Yeah, I mean, there's plenty to dunk on. Like, they're fucking clearly mentally unwell, okay? Uh, you know? Which I did already, but there's only so much I can say about how fucking insane they are to like literally fly to DC to be like, oh my god, I'm so happy this happened. I think a lot of people mistake uh, how successful that kind of like shitty fucking uh, argumentation is. Not a bad bitch in sight. This is pretty funny. Oh, the thing I was gonna say. So, um, so for example, oh, how dare you use misogyny to combat like an inherently misogynistic political position, right? Here's how. Here's how you do it. Are you ready for this? The normative position for the overwhelming majority of public is infinitely more conservative than you, especially when it comes to social issues. 
We are a product of the patriarchal environment. We're a product of the patriarchy. Understanding and recognizing that is one thing, but sometimes you have to personally, regardless of whether or not you know that it's a logically uh, fallacious argument or whatever, have to advocate for certain things because it makes for good agitprop. Okay? So saying like, oh, these people are having a mid-off or whatever will 100% captivate a much larger audience than you trying to clinically dissect what is exactly wrong with these people, okay? Sometimes you fucking make jokes and, and those jokes are going to come across as, uh, you know, those jokes are going to come across as misogynistic. Those jokes are going to come across as like one way or the other, okay? But with the given, when you talk about the given context of the particular situation, you should be able to understand that like, yeah, saying that these ladies are having a mid-off right now is not objectifying them automatically, okay? There is a level of misogyny associated with that, but ultimately, you know, that is, it's for a larger purpose, okay? It's a tactical uh, reason. Now, there, of course, is a level that you can't go beyond, okay? Like uh, racism, for example, or a level of misogyny that is, like, unacceptable, clearly, okay? And there is. And uh, I think, like, as long as you teeter on the edge and stay on one side of that edge, every now and then you can make fucking jokes like this. Call the men nerds too. How is that different? Yeah. Uh, no, it's definitely different. There is no historical oppression associated with like fucking men being nerds in the same way that like women are objectified and exclusively uh, hailed as like, uh, you know, important or, or have value expressly on their physical uh, appearances. Come on. Calling people mid is stigma, not misogyny in this context. And stigma works. For example, ostracizing people for homophobia made the landscape very different than when I was in school. Yeah. Yeah. Before I watched you, I didn't even know what misogyny was. I feel like I've learned so much. People are allowed to be mean, acting like there's a grand purpose for it is, for it is still though. What? I mean, dude, honestly, listen, listen. Oh, silly though. Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing this because like there's a broader thing that I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, that's true. I'm just doing it because I'm blowing off fucking steam. And a lot of normal people, the larger achievement there is that a lot of normal people see me fucking blow off steam and they're like, okay. That's a, that's fine. Like I'm, you know, I, I, I agree. I feel that way too. And if the, if your fucking activism revolves around that, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Right wingers do the exact same thing to leftists. Exactly, dude. Exactly. And it is a very effective way to fucking propagandize like cringe posting and looking at people who are cringing, looking at people who like are, are looking weird and cringy can can be very effective in like uh galvanizing support against them because most people don't have like a deep rooted political underlying deep rooted political attitude they're just simply uh they're just simply looking at what is cringe what's popping off and uh what's counterculture and what's not um station abortion let's get back to this lady having a, a the, the biggest mid off has wrought on our country on a communal level and on a personal level and this it, it's so vindicating to know that we can now take tangible steps to lessen the violence of abortion in our country 10 years ago did you ever imagine this would happen i imagined it a lot but i still people told me it was impossible that we would never see this kind of victory and now i know that victory is not only possible it's happened so we are going to God damn, bro. This is like, uh, this motivated you to cry tears of joy. Like, you are literally an oinking little piglet, dude. Holy fuck. These hogs, brother. I got to put this bandana on. We're doing hog watch early, brother. I thought we were going to do it in a little bit, but god damn, it's pig hunting time. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> hog watch is back on the market. Call me Pig Man and Ted Nugent, boys. God damn. Them hogs are oinking hard as fuck today. This fucking hog okay this hogina decided to fly to fucking dc in anticipation of like a decision that is going to deny tens of millions of women a medical procedure holy fuck dude mind-boggling existence She's crying tears of fucking joy She's like hell yeah like women will be killed as a consequence of this and she's like it's so good so good i get only way i can live only way i can live my life is when i'm when i'm back in state-sponsored legislation and state-sponsored oppression that's harming women that's right they're running victory circles i can't bear it like it's just so sad it's a pathetic state of existence ayo hey, random but why do you call them hogs 
Why do I call conservative hogs? Because they're piglets. They behave like fucking hogs. I think some of these are some of these people are pro abortion and some of the some of these are pro choice, some of these are anti choice. Right back. It's not the will of the people, and this country is supposed to run off of the will of the people. I'm twenty one and I'm terrified. And we have a lot of work to do but to make that happen, but we will never give up. It's oh my gosh, you got the cat ears. Oh no. Fifty years since there was last a significant decision on abortion rights in no, America. It, it might, might be, be another fifty. 50. More. Sure. But we're not going to stop. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they say. Again, abortions will continue. They just won't be legal and women will die from botched abortions. It's obvious this ruling is not going to end the arguments over abortion in America. In fact, it will inflame them. In this deeply polarized society, abortion is already one of the most divisive issues. It made the United States an outlier among developed nations in the world. It made the United States an outlier among non-developed nations, too. Like, ironically, there are plenty of third world nations where, like, the right to an abortion, a medical process, is still protected. Like, I mean, Turkey's a great example, you know? It's getting ass-fucked by inflation, okay? A country that is, like, half-developed, a second world nation. Still, there is public health care uh, offered to every citizen, okay? Unconditionally paid for by the government. And that public health care... Uh, it offers abortions as well. Think about that. But this decision must not be the final word. Abortion rights have been fought over for decades. Good evening. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. In 1973, the Supreme Court ruled in the test case of Roe v. Wade that women must have access to abortion across America. A decision totally reversed today. Totally it is reversed. My profound honor to be the first president in history. The split on abortion for the split on support for abortion is not even close to 50%. Yeah, it's like, dude, dude, protecting abortion rights are more popular than pretty much every fucking congressperson. Definitely more popular than the president. Definitely more popular than the Republican Party in general. It is significantly more popular than Congress and politicians in general. Okay, just so remember that. Remember that. It's not a 50-50 split. It's like a 70-30 split, if at all, okay? ...to attend the March for Life. As president, Donald Trump deliberately appointed three pro-life justices to the court, making today's ruling possible. He says God made the decision. In fact, it was six of the nine judges. By a vote of six to three, the court affirmed that the power to protect unborn life is returned to the people and their elected representatives. The people have won a victory. Jesus loves the living. Bullshit. Bullshit. Once again, horrible, horrible fucking made up narrative. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Biden is nothing, okay? As an individual, he, he's nothing. It doesn't matter what Biden has to say or what Biden is doing or what he's not doing. Like, there are plenty of people in the Democratic Party who, or there are plenty of aides, there's staffers, there's so many other people that can do something about this. Um, ultimately, though, as I was saying, um, Brandon is not great at, at dealing with the situation, but neither is the Democratic Party as a whole in general, okay? So that's fucking annoying, too. Uh, having said that, however, having said that, however, there's more, there's more to the... I, I'm going to go back to the, what the fucking Kevin McCarthy was saying. Literally, literally, Kevin McCarthy is lying, once again. Every other, Demo every other Republican is lying in a similar capacity when they say this is about democracy. It's not. I have to, do not ever let anyone, do not let anyone ever tell you that this is about a democratic process. It's not. They know for a fact that the state legislatures are inherently undemocratic. That's why they want to revert it back to the state legislatures where Republicans fucking dominate. Now I have to tell them, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry that your boyfriend beats you every day and that he rapes you all the time. There's nothing I can do. You're going to have to find somewhere else to go. I mean, I can give them information to help them try, but it's heartbreaking, man. Like, you know, this place saved my life, literally. This is how I usually chart that. For more than 10 years, Dr. Willie Parker has traveled here from another state because the restrictive laws and the threat of violence or financial ruin has long been too great for local doctors to carry out abortions here themselves. I feel angry in the way that anybody who is deeply... This is really good to see immediately after you see those fucking hog alinas like squealing like little piglets outside of the fucking Supreme Court in celebration.
This is what they're celebrating. Okay? This is what they're celebrating. They're celebrating about denying people the right to a medical process, a medical procedure. So that they can make better decisions about their own fucking bodies. Celebrating not ending life. That's not life, dude. I mean, you're barely life. You know, you're just filth walking on this fucking earth. You know what I mean? Trying to make everyone feel as shitty as you do on a, on a never-ending basis. And until you recognize that, like, the cruelty that you try to subject others to, to bring them down to your fucking level, uh, is, is partially the reason why you resent, and, and so many people resent you back, okay? Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, there's a reason why people fucking do not like you, okay? And part of that is your attitude. That's not true, man. Uh, you know it's true, Alex the Mex. Come on, brother. You know it's fucking true. Deep down inside, you know it's true. If you were actually fucking having a good time, you wouldn't have highlighted a message to say that. The truth hurts. But you can help yourself. You can help yourself. And the first step to helping yourself immediately comes from not feeling this way all the time, okay? You don't have to make yourself angry all the time. You might have been misguided. You might have been misled into thinking that this is like a genuine, you know, this is like genuinely murder or whatever the fuck. But you don't have to champion those fucking causes anymore. Or especially, you don't have to like try to ride or die for those causes in a place like this. The moment that you write something like this in the chat implies that, and you literally personally fucking highlighted your, your, your uh, note here. It, it, you, you automatically are just doing this because you're, you're, is a cry for help. So I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you the help. Okay? Try to understand why people are upset. They're frustrated. You, you're watching people straight up talk about, like, not being able to control their own bodies. In 92% of the abortions that occur, in so many of these instances, it's just simply a pill. Okay? You're just taking a pill, and it's a fucking heavier flow, period. Vested in human rights should feel angry and outraged and indignant anytime they are witnessing injustice. We will come to recognize the full cost of criminalizing abortion when we start to see the bump and the rise in maternal mortality and morbidity suffer. That's the other thing, man. That's the other fucking incredibly fucked up problem is that like a lot of people can't comprehend how horrifying giving birth is across the board and the likelihood that you will die in the process skyrockets if you're a black woman, okay? Not being accountable for their actions, GG. What do you mean? Not being accountable for what actions? Dude, this kind of attitude is so fucking stupid, Jake Programming, because you or your parents probably have diabetes because they ate a lot of sugar. Maybe not fucking genetically, right? Maybe they had a genetic predisposition towards uh, diabetes. Do you think we should deny your fucking hog parents insulin because they got diabetes? Them Lord making the choice to have sex. No, I'm I I hear I hear you. I understand how fucking stupid you are, Jake. Programming. It's a self report. Making the choice to have sex is sex exclusively for a, a reproductive purpose. Life is already boring as fuck. It's already horrible. It sucks. Just because you're a fucking sexless little loser doesn't mean everyone else has to be that way too. Also, there's a, there, you're, you're looking at an instance where like someone is literally fucking raped and beaten by their boyfriend. They, that's not consensual. And they still can't get a fucking abortion. You cannot treat these dumbass trolls like they're people. They're debate pervert, groiper, losers, dude. You know, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm in a charitable mood. I'm trying my best to like try to fucking, you know, stop people from behaving this way. But if the U.S. is so terrible... Ryan. Suffering and death related to conditions that are unique to pregnancy. I put that to the woman who fought back tears of joy as she signed Arkansas's almost total ban on abortion into law. It makes no exception for rape or incest. A termination can only take place now in the case of maternal medical emergency. Well, I don't know if that doctor has any facts uh, to base that hypothetical answer on. Uh, we, we don't have any information to, to base that conclusion that this doctor has come up with. And hopefully, you know, this, this law that we're putting in place specifically says to save the life of a mother. For the anti-abortion protesters outside the clinic, this is a good day. 
we will not fully celebrate until abortion is eradicated fully from our land, until Little Rock Family Planning Services, for example, is closed down and does not reopen, then we can celebrate for sure. They will continue their fight, but the Supreme Court's ruling will fundamentally change the course of the lives of all the women who passed the protesters every day to provide the care they did here, along with those of millions of others across the United States. Sophie Long, BBC News, Little Rock, Arkansas. For the record, normally, like an actual clinic escort, I don't know if these people are actually doing that, but normally there are abortion clinic escorts. What they're supposed to do is protect you from all the fucking psychotic freaks that are, you know, uh, pestering you as you are making this complicated decision. But what these people have fucking done is, is, is instead is like some of these people literally states only some of these people literally have now put on clinic escort fucking vests, even though they are fake and actually they are not there to help people get an abortion but instead to stop you from getting one. That's how fucking indecent some of these psychos are. I need you to understand. And that principle applies also to, that principle also applies to the family crisis centers, okay? Family crisis centers operate like an abortion clinic. They look like an abortion clinic, they sound like an abortion clinic, but inside they never offer you an abortion. They have a fake doctor or a real doctor that legally ha uh, lies to you, okay? about why you shouldn't have an abortion and there are states where the th where the family crisis center to abortion clinic percentage is literally like 13 to 1 ohio i believe pro lifers are literally not human beings dude i swear to god like the pro life conservatives that take matters in their own hands are just straight up not human they this is their entire fucking life this is their entire uh, uh, purpose of existence is to just like forcibly make sure women have to carry pregnancies the term. 